الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على خاتم الأنبياء. I'm highly privileged to interact with a large number of seekers of knowledge, and I learn by this process myself. The topic of today's discussion is civilizational contribution during Khilafat Rashida and later period. We will try to be as brief as possible in my presentation and leave more time for question and answer session, inshallah. To begin with, Islamic concept of history and origin of man or anthropology is rooted in Al-Quran and therefore human being in Islamic perspective is not a biological byproduct of an evolutionary process. Unfortunately, myself and most of those who are listening to me, they have been raised in an educational and knowledge paradigm in which from day one as a child, they have been told human beings are a result of an evolution. Islam tells us that human beings are not a byproduct, but they by themselves independently were created and therefore, for this human being who had independent existence, not an outcome of a long process, a civilizational guideline was given by Islam. As civilizational force, Islam views man as an independent creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because the creator does not need to go through a long process of evolution of millions of years and then from a prototype bring some new creation. The creator has enormous power to just say kun and it is there. Therefore, the whole understanding of uh, history and man in Islamic framework is very much different. The uh, Islamic concept of uh, civilization is also very much different. It is based on certain values which we'll discuss in a while, inshallah. The civilizing role of man is defined by the Quran as recognition and subservience to his creator. When he submits and accepts his creator, then peace, justice, human sustainability is established on earth. Next, please. Man in this process is actor, not a passive receiver. Because man has been gifted with freedom of the will. And that means he has a choice to act justly and fairly. He has also a choice to become himself an oppressor, a rebel, or become a person who removes zulm oppression, exploitation of society. Civilization in Islam is founded on ethical principles such as Tawheed, Tukhuwa or Brotherhood, Al-Akhirah or seeking ultimate success in life hereafter and social justice or Adala Istimaiya where people are given their due share. Next please. Islam stands for intellectual and scientific development. Unfortunately, the whole history and whatever is taught in social sciences and social studies in schools, we are told that religion has always been an obstruction and rationalism came up as a reaction to it. In the case of Islam, from day one, the Quran emphasized on use of uh, knowledge, use of uh, in instruments to understand things, and particularly use of our own body, our eyes, our ears, our mind to understand how things are. Therefore, we find that from day one, scholars were respected. Scholars in the time of uh, Khulafa Rashidin were known as Qurra. 
We use this word Qura, Qurqari, for those who recite very well. While what they meant was something different. What they meant was a person who had mastered the Ulum al Quran, Ulum al Hadith, Tariq, Adab, Geography, Geography, who knew very well how the Quran was revealed and how to apply it. A scholar in every uh, dimension of the word. Therefore, when the Battle of Yamama resulted in uh, Shahada of many uh, uh, Qura knowledgeable persons, uh, the uh, Khalifa felt obliged to make sure that the Quran is compiled in one volume and portions are put together. So in future, nobody is going to dispute its uh, uh, uniqueness and its uh, unity. Next, please. We know that uh, Sahaba had knowledge of not only the Quran, but of Hadith, like Abdullah ibn Masood, Maqil ibn Yasar, and others whose names are displayed here in front of you. These Sahaba knew very well not only Hadith, but they were teachers of Hadith. Therefore, uh, second Caliph Umar al Khattab particularly appointed them in different places and they were able to educate hundreds and thousands of people. We find that the science of criticism of Hadith, Jarwat Tadil, uh, developed not later but in the time of Umar al Khattab. It was uh, his uh, vision and uh, supervision that he tried to find out among the uh, Sahaba who were involved in uh, communication of Hadith, are they doing it based on critical approach or just on memory? Therefore, he often had examination of the Muhaddisin himself to verify how far they were fully aware and fully present in the command of knowledge. For example, the issue of Khabar Ahad was raised and a consensus was reached by the companions based on the Sunnah of Allah, peace be upon him. Next please. Next please. We find under Umar bin Khattab a whole discipline of jurisprudence or fiqh developed. Actually, it was in time of the poet, peace be upon him, that he himself specified some companions to give legal opinion on issues that were emerging in society. Among those were Umar bin Khattab as well as Ibn Abi Talib. However, in the time of Umar bin Khattab, this aspect was fully developed and the uh, issues dealing with daily life were raised by him. In the life of time of the Prophet, we find that even at that time, Umar raised issues of fiqhi nature like janaza of Munafiq, like hijab for Umhatul Mu'mineen, like uh, treatment of captives of Badr, and at the same time, matter of Azan was. Uh, his uh, recommendation, his proposal, and at the same time, the issue of Amal al fay in his uh, own time when uh, some, some areas were conquered without fight. All these issues were of uh, fiqhi nature, involving international law and Islamic jurisprudence. He at the same time tried to establish a whole institution of ifta. Ifta means counseling advisement based on the Islamic principles. Among those we find Ali ibn Abi Talib, Usman ibn Affan, Muaz ibn Jabal, Abdul Rahman ibn Auf, Ubi ibn Kaab, Zayd ibn Sabit, Abu Huraira. All these are known names. They were not just muhaddis, but they were appointed to guide people on various issues they were facing. Next please. During the Khilafah Rashida, we find that basic political concepts were developed. And therefore, the political system 
کرسٹلائز ان دا خلاف راشدہ پیریڈ دا کوالٹیز آف خلیفہ انسٹیٹیوشن آف شورا ہاؤ ٹو ڈیسائڈ میٹرز دی آفیشیل ڈیزیگنیشن آف قادی اینڈ انسٹیٹیوشن آف قدا جوڈیشری افتا ایٹ دا سیم ٹائم دی ایشوز ایز ریلیٹ ود ویریس انڈیویجل پرابلمس ور آلسو ٹیکن اپ ان دیٹ پولیٹیکل سسٹم پبلک ویلفیئر اینڈ سول ایڈمنسٹریشن واز فلی انسٹیوشنلائزڈ اے فریم ورک واز ڈیولپ فار دیٹ ایڈمنسٹریٹو گائیڈ لائنز ور ایشوڈ ٹو گورنرز آف پروونسز اینڈ لوکل ایڈمنسٹریشن انسٹرکشنز ایشوڈ بائی خلفا لائک عمر عثمان علی شو دیر میچورٹی اینڈ نالج آف پبلک ایڈمنسٹریشن دا ویری فیمس لیٹر of instruction of uh, given uh, to Malik bin Ushtar by Ali ibn Abi Talib is a classic example where he deals with all those issues a governor should know very well and defines how things are to be done in Islamic manner. Next please. At the same time we find that the role of masjid was defined as a cultural and civilizational center for dissemination of knowledge. Therefore, knowledgeable Sahaba were appointed to teach Quran, Hadith and Fiqh in major masajid. Ubadah Misamit, Abu Darda and several others were known teachers. We are told only in Damascus, 1,600 students studied in the Jame in the mosque as regular students. Similarly, Umar also encouraged literary activities throughout the country. Next please. The Quran and Sunnah encouraged seeking of knowledge and production of Ilm and Nafi, which means that Islam from day one encouraged critical thinking scientific development and did not obstruct in any kind of civilizational development. The Quran invited human intellect to scientific thinking, observation, experimentation and verification of information and data. It made seeking of knowledge an obligation, a farida. And therefore, Muslim male and female both were obliged to seek knowledge. But knowledge was also classified as Fard al ain which is obligatory. What is halal, what is haram? Not just in meat or fruit or food, but what is halal vision? What is halal dress? What is halal family? What is halal economy? What is halal political system? What is uh, halal uh, economic development? everything based on what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants. And similarly, things which were fard kifaya, not for on everyone, but which were for specialized people, like it's not necessary that every Muslim becomes a medical doctor or every female becomes a, an chief executive. It's only some persons which are needed to run the society. They uh, should take up the responsibility and therefore they fulfill the requirement of uh, social needs uh, by their becoming a specialist in there. Next please. What I have said earlier is documented here from the Quran. Therefore these ayats tell you that the Quran invites people to think, contemplate on the science in universe, in human body around us. And each single ayah in front of you, taken out of so many other ayat, indicates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted every believer to be a critical thinker, a keen observer, and someone who contemplates. That has become the quality of believers according to the Quran. Next, please. Next, please. 
uh, you find here the Quran telling you that you have to reflect on cosmos and that led Muslims to create observatories, instruments, uh, uh, the, the, the uh, uh, gadgets that could help them uh, in finding out the movements of uh, heavenly bodies, telescopes and huge telescopes like in Samarkand and else places where you find that Uluq Bey developed a whole lab, an observatory from where he was coming up with uh, very valid observations, even they are relevant today. Therefore, the Quran invites every believer to look into nature, into universe, and then raise the question, are all these things happening by accident? Is it just method by itself that becomes like that? Or there is the only creator of this universe who has made this and made this in order that human beings may think and reflect on it. Next, please. It also invites them to learn from even animals and therefore tells us that how he has made uh, mates among animals, how he has made small uh, uh, flies, uh, small uh, uh, in insects that, that go and learn and uh, uh, bring out honeybees, create honey for people, which is source of uh, 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 strength, which provides even a cure for a number of diseases. And all these aspects, creation of animals in pairs, and they are uh, um, becoming instrumental in agriculture as well. All these aspects are there to learn and investigate and make use of them in our developmental process. Next, please. It also talks about rainforest as sign. Malaysia, Indonesia, and many parts of the world have huge forests. And these forests are not just uh, by accident. The Quran tells us that these are created for a purpose. And that purpose is to provide human beings with sustainability. If these forests were not there, you will not have rain, you will not have water, you will not have vegetation, you will not have fruit, you will not have even animal kingdom. Because all those are linked together ecologically. So. When the Quran talks about rainforest, it tells us about how things are uh, created for human beings to investigate and have a civilizational process. Next, please. It focuses particularly on honeybee and tells us how it creates and establishes uh, uh, a whole uh, industry of honey. And in this way, the global need of honey is met by a very, very small creature, not just accidentally, but with a uh, design and purpose made by the creator himself. Next, please. It also tells us that human beings have to learn from history. Therefore, the ayah says, have they not traveled around the land to see the nature of the consequences for those who were before them? Allah wiped them out and similar fate awaits those who reject Allah. And then, and their tribes, uh, Ad and Samud, is manifest to you from traces of their ruined dwellings. When we travel uh, or do tourism, not just for pleasure, but for learning, then we find from these uh, remnants of earlier civilizations how to avoid unethical practices and how to build a new civilization based on ethics and morality given by the Quran and Sunnah. Therefore, Islamic civilizational process becomes essentially a translation of ethics and morality in human behavior, in economy, in family, in political system, in defense system, in education, in everywhere. Keeping in view these basic principles, let's see how these were applied by just a few big names that we know. 
Next, please. Among those is one whose name is Abu Musa Jabir ibn Hayyan. He was born in Kufa and has been known generally as father of chemistry. He was son of a druggist and perfume maker. He worked under patronage of uh, Barmakai uh, ministers uh, of Harun Rashid and wrote more than 100 monumental treatises out of which 22 dealt only with chemistry. He introduced experimental investigation in alchemy, devoted efforts to develop of development of basic chemical methods and a study of various mechanisms of chemical reactions. This included crystallization, distillation, calcination, sublimation, and evaporation. He also invented several instruments for conducting experimentation. Next, please. He introduced methods of refinement of metals, use of manganese dioxide in glass making, varnishing of waterproof cloth, and protection of iron, use of iron pyrides for writing in gold and distill, distillation of uh, vinegar to, to concentrate uh, to, to, to concentrate acid, acetic acid. The most important discovery made by him was uh, pre-creation of sulfuric acid. Next, please. He also developed aqua regia or to dissolve gold. Unfortunately, some of these uh, uh, aspects have been overemphasized and uh, some Muslim scientists have been projected as persons who wanted to just make gold. No, the idea was how substances can be changed and used for better purposes. Therefore, his Kitab al Kimia and Kitab al Sawain were translated into Latin and published in 1144 by Robert Chesler. Some other translations were made, and the, the work, uh, some of the perfections uh, in 1678. Several terms which he introduced, like alkali, uh, were used in various European languages. Next, please. Another name which is very great is Muhammad ibn Musa al Khwarizmi. Al Khwarizmi was born in Khwarizm or Khiva in present day Uzbekistan. He flourished under Al Mamun in Baghdad. He was one of the greatest mathematicians who ever lived. He introduced the concept of algorithms. He is the founder of algebra and he gave analytical solutions of linear and quadratic equations. The name algebra is drawn from his book Al Jabr Wal Muqabila. Next, please. Next, he developed uh, trigonometric tablets containing the sine functions. He also developed the calculus of two errors which led him to concept of differentiation. He adopted the use of zero in numeral of fundamental importance. He also wrote books on astronomy and astronomical tables. Several of his uh, books were translated in Latin in early 12th century. This included Kitab al Jame, Wa Tafriq, Al Hisab, Al Hindi, and uh, Al Muqabila Fil Hisab, Al Hindi. Uh, his books were used as main texts in European universities for several uh, decades and centuries. He also contributed in geography and revised Ptolemy's views on geography. Several geographic works under him. Uh, and produced first map of globe in 830. His most famous work is entitled Kitabul Haywan, an encyclopedia of animals in seven large volumes. Next, please. We also have a great name, Ali ibn Rabban al Tabari. He was distinguished for his expertise in medicine, mathematics, astronomy, and philosophy. His book, Firdaus al-Hikmah, 
was first medical encyclopedia covering variety of relevant topics. Volume 1, uh, Kuligati Tib, is, discusses several issues in medical science that emerged during this period. Volume 2, elucidation of the organs of human body and rules uh, for good health. Volume 3, discusses diet for good health. Volume 4, discusses common diseases from head to toe. Next, please. The next volume, uh, uh, divide in different sections, provide us with the, what are general causes to, uh, uh, to, to, to eruption of disease, uh, what are diseases related to head and brain, dealing with eyes, nose, ears, mouth and teeth, muscular diseases, matters related to chest and lungs, diseases of abdomen, diseases of liver, diseases of gallbladder and, and spleen, uh, in, in, intestinal diseases, different kinds of fever, miscellaneous diseases, examination of the pulse and urine, flavor of uh, uh, why, why, what is the role of taste and color, organic uh, poisons, uh, miscellaneous topics in health. In brief, every single aspect has been covered in these volumes independently and in detail. Next, please. The, uh, you have further, yes, the, the other important name is uh, Sabit Ibn Qurra. Uh, he was known in the West as uh, Sabit. He is known for his works in uh, mechanics, born in Haran in Turkey, <clears throat> while in Baghdad he worked as a team member of the great mathematician Ibn Musa Ibn Shakir. <clears throat> he pioneered in extending the concept of traditional geometry to geometric algebra and proposed theories that led to development of non Euclidean geometry. Spherical trigonometry used to study several aspects of conic sections. He also cre uh, uh, cre he, he was also critical of Ptolemaic views on astronomy. He added the ninth sphere to Ptolemaic astronomy. He worked on surface features of the moon. He translated several books from Greek to Arabic, including Ptolemy's Al Majest. Next, please. <clears throat> then we have Abu Abdullah Al Batani. Al Batani was known in the West as uh, Al Batajinus. He was a famous astronomer and mathematician. He made several improvements on Ptolemy and reflected the calculations for the orbit of the moon and other planets. He proved the possibility of annular eclipses of the sun and with great accuracy, the obliquity of seasons, lens of season, etc. He calculated solar year as 365 days five hours, 46 minutes and 24 seconds with remarkable accuracy, close to modern calculations. He became famous for using trigonometric ratio as we use them today. He was first to replace Greek characters by sign. His contribution in theory of sign, cosine and tangent won him global recognition. He authored several books on astronomical calculations, including Al Zig. Its session was published in Rome in 1899. <clears throat> Next, please. Abu Bakr uh, Razi, uh, known for his uh, great uh, medical uh, achievements, uh, he he, uh, he was physician. Uh, best physician in the, in the Middle Ages and remained undisputed authority till 17th century on medicine. His writings on smallpox and measles show originality and accuracy. He studied alchemy, mathematics, physics and philosophy. You see the point here is that these were not persons who knew only one discipline. These were philosophers, these were mathematicians, these were physicists, these were chemists. They had encyclopedic knowledge, and that's why 
they were able to make an impact. Uh, uh, he he used uh, to an, an interesting method determine suitability of, of 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 site for hospitals in Baghdad, for example, by placing pieces of fresh meat at various parts of the city and finding out how long it takes to get rotten and then decided that the place where it was least rotten is more environmentally friendly to build a hospital. Very simple process, logical process and workable process. He wrote a number of works. Among those is a, a Kitab al-Mansuri, al-Hawi, Kitab al-Muluki, Kitab al Judri, Wal Hasba, and so on and so forth. Next, please. He was first to use alcohol for medical purposes. He was an expert surgeon, first to use opium for anesthesia and to give an account of extraction of cataract and non narrowing down of pupil of the eye, which is very uh, technical and delicate area. His Al-Havi was an encyclopedic work on medicine in 20 volumes. It was translated in uh, Latin, French, and reprinted in, in 1488. In, in 1542, five editions of Al-Havi appeared in Europe. Its influence in Europe medical sciences is undisputable. Kitab al-Mansuri was translated into Latin in 1840, it comprised of 10 volumes. Some of the volumes were also published in German language. And similarly, his Al Judari was the first scientific work on smallpox and chickenpox. It was first translated in Latin in uh, 1565 and later several European languages. Next, please. Next, please. He advised as physician to have exhaustive data collection for each patient, which we do nowadays, case history, by raising questions, finding out genetic background, the whole case history of the patient, and only then coming up with the proper treatment. He also advised treatment of patients through nutrition, which is now an emerging discipline in the West, and people are now switching over to nutrition instead of use of chemicals. So he was the person who pointed out this, uh, this important area and uh, showed by his uh, uh, researches how it can cure uh, human beings and how he, it can help them. Uh, he also understood very well psychology of patients. He also advised patients to confine to one trustworthy physician and not keep on changing. One of his books, Kitabul uh, Asrar, deals with preparation of chemical materials and the utilization. He also uh, authored Jami Fil Tib, Kitabul Qalb, Kitabul Mafasil. Forty of his manuscripts are preserved in museums and libraries in Iran, Paris, Britain, and Rampo. Next, please. Abu Qasim Al Zahrawi, uh, a name, a, a person. Uh, who uh, was born uh, in uh, Cordova, near Cordova. He was one of the greatest surgeons in the history of medicine. He died in 1013, two years after the sacking of Al Zahra, due to which his works remained unknown for a long time. He authored At Tasrif, a 30 volume encyclopedia, which included sections on surgery, medicine, orthopedics ophthalmology, pharmacology, nutrition, etc. Next, please. He advised on every, on very close observation of patient and practice of ethics, which means the concept of uh, the, the, the uh, intensive care unit was given by him. At the same time, patients uh, should be treated very ethically confidentiality and all those aspects which relate with patient life are to be fully guarded. In that sense, he is originator of professional uh, ethics in medical science as well as of uh, the uh, uh, proper 
investigative processes. Uh, he also uh, cautioned against quakes that you should not go to people who are not properly qualified. His works were translated in Latin in 12th century and played an important role till 17th century in Europe. He also wrote on chemical preparations, which means he knew very well uh, pharmacology and areas of uh, developing medicine, tablet making, filtering of extracts, and related pharmaceutical techniques. Some of his works were published in Venice in 1471. His monumental work on surgery provided 200 illustrations and drawings of human body. And that tells us how um, uh, uh, expert and, and how deep they were in their uh, knowledge of a human body and science of surgery. He also wrote on medical instruments such as tongue depressor and tooth extractor, catheter and optrexic devices. He wrote extensively on bone injury, on joints, on fractures of nasal bones, and on vertebrate. He explains the use of surgical instruments and use of uh, cosistics in surgery and operations uh, he performed on dead fetus. Next, please. Then we have Ibn Sina, another name which is uh, uh, which cannot be uh, disregarded anywhere in the world in the history of uh, medical science. Born in a village of Afghana near Bukhara uh, by descent and Ismaili, but uh, he developed a very keen uh, knowledge of the Quran and Arabic classics. Uh, for the following six years, he devoted himself to study of jurisprudence, philosophy, and other sciences. And that again shows Muslim physicians were not just medical doctors, they were also fully aware of philosophy of life, Quranic studies, jurisprudence, natural sciences, logic, and with that, they specialize in their area. He got interested in medicine when he was 17 years of age. Within one year, he built up a reputation as a physician. He was privileged to have patronage of the uh, Samani ruler and became very much uh, uh, privileged to have patronage of him and in this way, he became royal uh, uh, physician. It was at Georgian uh, uh, near Caspian Sea, he wrote his first part of famous al Anun, the book that remained as uh, the uh, uh, um, greatest authority on uh, medical science. It was uh, near Tehran, and he established himself as a renowned physician. Later, he moved to Hamdan, and cured the ruler uh, Shams, uh, Shams, Shams al of uh, Polik, who made him his prime minister. In a mutiny against him by army, he was dis dismissed and Im imprisoned. But again, due to Amir's sickness, he was uh, reinstated. And during this period, he taught his students his book, Shifa. Next, please. After the death of the Amir, he fled to Asfahan and again moved to Hamadan. With 50, uh, at 58, he died in 1037. He produced 21 major and 24 minor books on philosophy, medicine, theology, geometry, and astronomy. Brockleman attributes 99 books to him, in which 16 were on medicine and 68 on various topics, most of these written in Arabic. His Kitab al-Shifa and Qanun al-Tib won him fame all over the world. Al-Qanun is divided into five books that deal with general principles of medicine, simple drugs, alphabetically arranged, diseases of particular organs from head to toe, uh, diseases which uh, are uh, though local in their uh, uh, inception, but is spread to other parts of the body, for example, fever and compound medicine. Next, please. The Arabic text of Al-Qanun was published in Rome in 1593 and translated into Latin 
as canon in uh, in the last 30 years of the fifth century it passed through 15 latin editions and one in hebrew it was considered a medical bible for several centuries ibn sina also uh, noted close relationship between emotions and physical conditions which is a very delicate area how emotions impact on human health and body he also noted that music has definite physical and psychological effects on patients even today we find that music has a, a magical effect even on children and if they become addicted to it they cannot think otherwise unless they use music and that's why islam has raised a serious uh, questions about use of music and getting addicted to it next please then we have abu hasan ibn al haytham another well known uh, muslim uh, uh, physician he traveled uh, 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 to various places uh, from basra baghdad and egypt and spain he spent most of his life in spain a uh, physicist of high standing he made giant contributions to optics he conducted experiments on uh, uh, height and color optic illusions and reflections he examined the refraction of light and rays through uh, transparent mediums air water and discovered the law of refraction and uh, dispersion of light into the constituent colors his book kitabul manazir was translated into latin he also wrote on rainbow shadows eclipse and physical nature of light several european scientists such as roger bacon uh paul victor and others based their works on his findings he for the first time described various parts of the eye and gave scientific explanation of the process of vision he also tried to explain binocular uh, vision and explain uh, apparent increase in size of sun and moon he also explained how images are formulated and he was has been correctly called father of modern optics next please he also contributed in scientific theory and method of development by later muslim scientists uh, he differentiates scientific research from guesswork he shows the relation between observation hypothesis and verification which are very important aspects of research methodology he discovers in, in, in his, his discoveries include the ratio between the angle of uh, incidence and refraction does not remain constant he also pointed out magnifying power of a lens in his book mizan al hikma he discusses density of atmosphere and develops relative diversity of atmosphere and height he discovered that the twilight only ceases to begin when the sun is 190 degrees below the horizon all these aspects are based on very exact calculations of physics and optics he developed analytical geometry at the same time and uh, in in physics and studied uh, mechanics and motion of a body and was first in, in to, to propose that a body moves perpetually unless an ex, external force it stop, it stops it which is very basic concept in physics this is striking similar to first law of motion he also wrote about surface of the moon you see we find that they were not just uh, confining themselves to this world but they were trying to find out the whole universe and uh, therefore we find that his works were translated into latin hebrew and other languages next please uh, then we have uh, another name uh, abu rehan al beruni i think i should stop here for questions because we'll have no time then so let's go for question before i conclude Jazakumullah uh, khair, Professor. Uh, we have uh, several questions. Uh, the first one uh, is from Imam Kanafi. 
Uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, "In Allah, Yaba Sule Hazihil Umma Ala Rasil Rasi Kulli Miyatin Sanatin Man Man Yudid Yudidulaha Dinaha." According to Professor Nis, what's the meaning and application of this hadith? How do we know Al Mujaddidun, uh, the Muslim thinker, al in this? How do we know uh, Al Mujaddidun, the Muslim thinker in this era of COVID-19? You know, uh, it is uh, not uh, obligatory on us to find out what are the qualities of a mujaddid, but try to be mujaddid. Islam wants us to revive the true faith. Tajdeed means when we go back to Quran and Sunnah. It is not modernism, but it is revival of the true Islamic faith. Instead of discussing, can we call X a mujaddid or mujtahid or not? Islamic focus is that every believer must develop talent of ishtihad, talent of finding out what is the base for a new uh, uh, position in the Quran and Sunnah. And only then ishtihad can be made and only then someone can revive the Islamic heritage. Islamic heritage is not there just to praise it, but it is there to guide us and tell us how we build a better future. Islam is essentially a futurist faith which wants us to build a better future based on ayat of Allah's investigated properly and our own reason, our own experience, our own uh, 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 talents properly utilized. Therefore, we should not waste our time in deciding what are the uh, X number of qualities that we discover in a person to designate him as a mujaddid, but we should try to find out how we ourselves can move forward and have innovative thinking, can bring new creations, can use Quran and Sunnah for uh, coming up with better solutions for humanity. Next question from uh, Nick Yusuf uh, and a similar question from Swadi Saad. We are proud of our past but not convinced of our present. So what should we do to regain our status like our great past? Three very simple things. Firstly, we are not aware of our past either. We are told that uh, there was a dark age and then the age of science came, which was based on Greek and European thought. Everything originates in Europe. History, time, culture, civilization, dress. When we call someone cultured, civilized, then it means he wears a branded shirt made in Paris or uh, in America. Then he, he, he was civilized. Everything we are told is Muslims have no past. So we should know our past. Secondly, past is not to be worshipped, but past to be explored in order to find out how Muslims reach that point in scientific development. How they were able to study human body. How they were able to study the whole universe, how they were able to come up with new inventions, tools for investigation and research. And having known that, we should come up with what should be the future direction of scientific development. And that's only possible when we know our past and we know also what others have done. And then we add to it as creative people, as persons who are not uh, 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 influenced by the West or the East, but those who are uh, founding their, their, their research and development on directly learning from the Quran and Sunnah. Next question from uh, Samsul. Uh, if many scholars in the past period of Islamic Golden Age based their epistemology on empirical observation, how to apply their empirical science epistemology in Islamization of knowledge? Well, the difference is 
they never took empirical knowledge as ultimate while the whole physical and social sciences that we are taught and we teach in our universities assume that it's only empirical research and data analysis that is real and true and this is a problem they took help from empirical processes but they did not take these processes as ultimate they brought these processes under the divine guidance or hidayah of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala al qanun begins first with telling a reader how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made universe how he is very kind and generous how he is concerned about welfare of his creation and having said that then he comes to human body and tells how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has put secrets in it to be discovered by us and how he has guided us in curing this body to please him and to help his creation in other words the whole knowledge is based on basic principle of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as the creator as the uh, 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 the 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 sovereign as the uh, nourisher as the per, as, as the person who is uh, guiding us in everything therefore the whole discipline becomes based on islamic vision now that's what is the meaning of islamization also unless we make use of this vision as the basis in our specializations in area of, of our expertise then we are able to make use of both empirical evidence under the guidance of divine revelation next question from nuruddin uh, there are some people who argue that the idea of islamic civilization that iqbal maududi and faruqi were fighting for paid more attention to the aspects of development of umma but did not pay attention to the aspects of uh, developing the individual soul how do we respond to the this criticism development of uh, individual soul uh well you see it it's uh, based on a basic misconception uh iqbal maududi and uh, others were always talking about you have to develop individual character iqbal uses the word mard e momin insan e kamil human being which is complete mard e momin who is fully committed to islam and similarly uh, ustaz maududi uh, talks about that you must have first the purification of your thought and iman and then you must have a collective approach of ijtimaiya of not individualism but collectivism and not socialism collectivism putting together no none of them have neglected the development of individual that is the basis of their concept social change it's individual which grows into family family which go into society society grows into state and so on so forth so these are linked together and uh, it's not correct to think that they have not emphasized on individual development next question from munir uh, the philosophers like ibn sina have been viewed by many contemporary scholars as mutazilites or who had used human reason extensively uh, what is the correct and balanced approach towards these uh, early scholars well uh, mutazilites till today were never able to get majority recognition they were always considered a small group of thinkers who with all good intention came up with wrong conclusions mutazila had their basic concept of tauhid and adl which is the core of islam but this very good concept led them to some very weird conclusions therefore akhwanu safa and mu'tazila and those who call themselves rationalists were never uh, able to convince the majority of muslim umma they remain always a very very insignificant uh, minority secondly the very concept that rationalism uh, is not endorsed by quran 
I shared with you a number of Quranic ayat which invite a believer as well as a non-believer to think, ponder, rationalize, investigate, do research. Why the Quran says? Because the Quran wants us to use our capabilities of reason and logic, but not to make reason ultimate judge. Ultimate judge is the word of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Al Quran Al Karim. Islam makes all knowledge subservient to revealed knowledge. Wahi in the Quran and in its manifestation in Sunnah. These two are the benchmark for any rational theory, any concept to be valid or invalid. If human reason reason gives us a conclusion that so and so should be done, and we check it with the Quran and Sunnah. And it's against Quran. Then, with all claim of rationality, it will not be acceptable in Islam. Basis is revelation. That's why uh, rational approaches are to be encouraged, but not to be taken independent of revelation or Quran and Sunnah. Uh, he was also talking about Ibn Sina that he has been. Criticized to be a Mu'tazilite, is it correct? Definitely, that's correct. That's correct. Not only Ibn Sina, but most of Muslim philosophers have deviated from the uh, middle path of the Quran and Sunnah, and they have either ended up as uh, just rationalist, or some of them have ended up as very rigid uh, persons who are not allowing any kind of uh, rational use, and both are wrong. Islam wants us to take a middle of the road approach where knowledge is to be encouraged, empirical research is to be done, but not for the sake of empiricism, for the sake of tawhid, for the sake of welfare of society, for the sake of adal, for the sake of peace and security of mankind. Jazakumullah khair. I, I apologize to everybody. There are several questions still remaining, but we have run out of time. I would request. Can we uh, save those and take up next time? Yes, sure. We can save them. Um, can I request to Professor Nees Ahmed to kindly conclude this uh, lecture, and I would then request Brother Shahran to close this session. Well, uh, first of all, I must apologize for taking more time in my lecture. It's not usually my way of doing things. I always uh, keep larger portion for question answer, but I think I was carried away. With the material I wanted to cover, and that's why we had less time for question answer. So please uh, don't forget your questions, and I will request the coordinator also to kindly save those questions. And next time we begin with those questions before we talk about the uh, future topic. Uh, I uh, really appreciate uh, that those who are listening, they are raising meaningful questions. Some of those questions are uh, uh, normal, where uh, you, uh, you you expect those questions. Some are very educative for me, and they lead me to think more on various dimensions. I always take a pride in learning from my students, my uh, listeners, because it's their questions that uh, help me in further investigation and learning. Uh, by going to sources and finding out uh, their appropriate answers. Uh, in our discussion, we have tried to uh, briefly uh, provide an evidence that Islam from day one was civilizational force. Secondly, Islam does not buy the idea of human being as a byproduct, but as independent creation made to serve a purpose, and that purpose was to create ilm and nafi and to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through this ilm and nafi. This knowledge is to serve Him because He has given us the capacity, He has given us this responsibility, and if we use it properly, then we are His abad, His servants. So the scientific civilizational process is not against faith. But it is translation of faith into actual practices. There is no separation between 
civilization, culture and faith in Islam, it's one and single entity, integration of all of them. And that's what was the main point I was trying to convey to you, that Islamic faith is not separated. Islam is not just a, a system of theology for scholars and a system of empirical research for scientists. No, the same scientist is theologian, is philosopher, is chemist, is social scientist. And all this is uh, the concept of holistic knowledge and Islamized knowledge. Jazakumullah khair. I think we have run out of time. And uh, Brother Shahran has a problem. He has uh, been disconnected from this forum. So uh, thank you, everybody. Uh, we'll meet again next week, inshallah. And uh, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum